Welcome to the owner's class video for the Singer Simple 3232 sewing machine. In this video, we're going to go over what you need to know to get started, such as winding a bobbin, threading the needle, selecting a stitch, changing the needle, and more. Let's start by taking a tour of the machine. The first thing we're going to do is plug in the machine and turn it on. And you'll know the machine is on when the light comes on. On the side we have the hand wheel. On the top we have the bobbin winding stopper and bobbin winding spindle. The carry handle. The spool pin where we'll put our thread when we thread the machine. The stitch width dial to adjust the width of our stitches, the tension dial to fine tune the look of our stitches, the bobbin winding tension disc, a metal threading guide, another metal guide, the take up lever, which will be really important when we thread the machine. On the front, we have the reverse lever the stitch length dial, and the stitch selector dial. Down by our needle, we have the built-in needle threader, the needle, the all-purpose foot, and behind the all-purpose foot, we have the presser foot lifter, which raises and lowers our presser foot. When we remove the accessory tray, we expose the free arm of the machine. And when we open the door, we have accessories inside. In this pouch, we have some essentials like needles, extra bobbins, a spool cap, and some additional presser feet, as well as a buttonhole foot. Let's take a look at some of those extra presser feet that come with our machine. In addition to the all-purpose foot that's already on your machine, you get the buttonhole foot, for making buttonholes, the button sewing foot for sewing on buttons, and the zipper foot used for inserting zippers into your projects, but it can also be used for piping. Now let's wind a bobbin. The first thing we need to do to wind a bobbin is take off the removable storage compartment and open this door. Here we'll find our bobbin case. Pull this little latch and remove the case. And retrieve your bobbin. This machine uses class 15 transparent bobbins. If you want to purchase more bobbins for your machine, make sure you purchase Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins. To wind our bobbin, place a spool of thread onto the spool pin and cap it off with a spool cap. Bring the thread to metal guide number one and clip it in. Now I'm going to bring the thread down to number two, the bobbin winding tension discs and make sure the thread is snug in between those discs. Then I'm going to bring the thread over to number three, which is our bobbin winding spindle. The bobbin doesn't have a designated top or bottom, so make sure you thread the thread in and out the top of the bobbin. Hold on to the thread tail and click the bobbin into place on the bobbin winding spindle. Make sure the bobbin is all the way on the spindle so that the thread doesn't accidentally wind around the spindle itself. Move the bobbin winding spindle over to the right, hold on to the thread tail, and press the foot control to begin winding. When the thread tail is buried, 
flip the tail flush with the top of the bobbin and continue winding until the bobbin is full or until you have enough thread for your project. When you're done winding your bobbin, move the bobbin winding spindle back to the left, remove the bobbin, and clip the thread. Now we're ready to insert it into the machine. Now place the bobbin into the bobbin case and pull the thread to make sure the bobbin is rotating in a clockwise motion. Place the thread into this groove and bring the thread under the metal plate. You will feel and hear it click into place. Now hold onto this latch on the front of the bobbin case and insert it and you will feel it set into place. This finger will be pointed up towards the top of the machine. The first thing I'm going to do before threading the top of my machine is raise the presser foot. Next, turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position. You will also notice that the take-up lever is clearly visible. If you've just wound a bobbin, the top of your machine probably looks like this. Remove the thread from the bobbin winding tension discs. The thread is already in metal guide number one. Bring it around metal guide number two and bring it down number three. Do a U-turn at number four and bring it up to the take-up lever and go from the right to the left and bring it back down, you'll see the thread go into the eye of the take-up lever. Bring the thread down to number six and slip it into the guide right above the needle. This machine has a built-in needle threader. So bring the thread over to the metal hook and push down on the built-in needle threader so that it encompasses the needle. Bring the thread in between the two prongs and hold on to the thread to give it a bit of tension and release the built-in needle threader. In the back, there will be a little loop. Pull onto that loop and your needle is threaded. So there's one last thing we need to do before we sew on the machine. To draw up the bobbin thread, hold on to the upper thread and turn the handle towards you and make sure you lightly pull up on the upper thread tail. This way you'll be able to pull up a loop of the bobbin thread and place the threads under the presser foot towards the back of the machine. Close the door and put your removable storage compartment back on. Now we're ready to test sew a stitch. Before we do a test stitch out on our machine, make sure this machine is selected for a straight stitch. If it's not, turn your stitch selector dial so that the straight stitch icon is in line with the gray dot above. Make sure your stitch length dial is set between two and three, which is a standard length for a straight stitch. And make sure your stitch width dial is set to zero. Now place your test piece of fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and press your foot control to begin sewing. When you're done sewing, turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position and about to make its descent downward. Raise the presser foot, and remove your work. Trim the thread. And here's our stitch. It looks good on the top, and it looks good on the back, so it means our machine is threaded properly. If the stitches look good on top, 
but have loops on the bottom or these little wavy zigzags. It means the upper thread isn't threaded properly. Rethread your machine and do another test sew. Now we're ready to sew a seam. The machine is already set for a straight stitch. I notice on the needle plate there are some lines. While the needle is in center position, the line closest to the presser foot is 3 8 of an inch. The second line to the right is 1 half inch. And the third line over is 5 8 of an inch. A lot of commercial patterns I work with use 5 8 inch seam allowance, so I'm going to follow the third line. Place the fabric under the presser foot so that the edge of the seam lines up with your guideline and lower the presser foot. Press the foot control and sew forward a few stitches. Press and hold the reverse lever and sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse lever and sew along your seam. Notice I'm not pushing or pulling the fabric, I'm just guiding it along my guideline. Stop at the end of the fabric, press and hold the reverse lever, and sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse lever, and sew to the end. Turn the hand wheel so the needle is in the highest position and is about to make its descent downward. Raise the presser foot and remove the fabric. And here's our seam. The reverse stitching at the beginning and end of the seam secure the thread so that it doesn't become unraveled. Now let's take a look at some of our other stitches. To select another stitch on the machine, I'm going to come to the stitch selector dial and I want to do a multi-step zigzag stitch. So I'm going to move the dial until it clicks into place on this grouping of stitches that contains a multi-step zigzag stitch. But I see three colors. I see gray, blue, and red. So how do I know which one I'm going to sew? If I come up to the stitch length dial, I see that my numbers are in gray. So if the gray numbers line up with the gray dot above, then I'm going to sew a gray stitch. If I want to sew the blue honeycomb stitch, I'm going to turn my stitch length dial so that it clicks on the blue S1. If I want to sew the red feather looking stitch, I'm going to turn my stitch length dial and click it into place on the red S2. But I want to sew a gray multi-step zigzag, so I'm going to turn the stitch length dial back to where we had it between two and three. Because these are decorative stitches, there needs to be width involved. So I'm going to come up to the stitch width dial and I'm going to move it all the way up to five. Now let's see what that looks like. Place the fabric under the presser foot lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position, about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot. Remove the fabric and trim the thread. And there's our multi-step zigzag stitch. Now I want to sew this blue honeycomb stitch. The stitch grouping is already selected on my stitch selector dial. I'm going to come up to the stitch length dial and move it so that the blue S1 is selected. The stitch width dial is already set to number five. 
To sew the honeycomb stitch, place the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. When you've reached the end of the fabric, turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position, about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot. Remove the fabric from under the presser foot and trim the threads. And there's our honeycomb stitch. Lastly, I want to sew the red feather stitch. The stitch grouping is already selected on my stitch selector dial. And I'm going to come up to the stitch length dial and turn it so that the red S2 is selected. And the stitch width dial is already set to number five. Now to sew the feather stitch, place the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing once you've reached the end of your fabric. Turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle is in the highest position about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot. Remove the fabric from under the presser foot and trim the threads. And there's our feather stitch. Now let's make a buttonhole. The first thing you need to do when making a buttonhole is stabilize the fabric. Then move your button to where you want the buttonhole sewn on your project. And mark the bottom of the buttonhole. Then create a perpendicular straight line to act as a guideline for our buttonhole. Now go to the stitch selector dial and select the buttonhole stitch. Then go up to your stitch length dial and select this gray area that looks like a buttonhole. Go up to your stitch width dial and move it to five. Now we need to put the buttonhole foot on our machine. Take off the removable storage compartment and retrieve the buttonhole foot. Raise the top of the buttonhole foot Place your button inside and close the top so that your button is snug inside. Put the removable storage compartment back on the machine. To remove the all-purpose foot already on the machine, grab the all-purpose foot and push it toward you. and it will snap off. Place the buttonhole foot so that the metal bar lines up with the opening of the shank and push it away from you and it will snap into place. Then slide the buttonhole lever down and push it back. Take your marked fabric, line up the small guideline we made with the opening 
in the buttonhole foot, lower the buttonhole foot, and press the foot control to begin sewing. Once the buttonhole is complete, turn the hand wheel so that the needle is in the highest position, about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot and remove your fabric. And there's our buttonhole. To secure your thread tails from the buttonhole, thread them into the eye of a hand sewing needle and move the threads to the back side of the buttonhole and tie them to secure. To open the buttonhole, place a pin at the top bar tack. This will keep us from accidentally cutting through our bar tack. Take the seam ripper buttonhole opener that's located in your removable storage compartment Insert it at the bottom of the buttonhole and move your way up carefully. Remove the pin and there's our buttonhole. To change the needle, retrieve this L-shaped screwdriver from your removable storage compartment. I'm going to place a piece of paper over the feed teeth, just so I don't accidentally drop the needle into my machine. Hold the needle and turn the needle clamp screw towards you to loosen it. Pull down on the needle and it's been removed. Take a new needle with the flat side to the back and insert it into the needle clamp. Turn the needle clamp screw away from you to tighten it and remove the paper. Now you've changed a needle. To learn more about your machine, refer to your instruction manual or check out the Singer site.